What's going on everyone? My name is Nicholas Merton here from Data Dash and today is January 22nd of 2024. Well folks, I hope you all are having a fantastic day wherever you are because in today's video I want to talk about what may very well be one of the most important discussions we have in 2024. I want to speak one-on-one -on -one with you guys about the post ETF results and spend some time to talk about why this could be a pivotal moment for the direction of crypto markets going throughout 2024. We're going to take a look at the real hard numbers, not the headlines, not what people want to hear, but focus in on what really is driving price and what may very well explain why we've continued to see a correction over these past few weeks. we got a lot to unpack here in today's video, so if you happen to enjoy it, consider dropping a like and let's go ahead and kick things off, guys. So I want to start here by talking a little bit about why. Why is Bitcoin seeing, since the launch of the ETF, a drop from its relative highs at right under $49,000 down to where we are around right under $41,000? So there's a big reason for this here, and it's not just a buy the hype, sell the news story. That is definitely potentially a role in it, but we need to analyze under the surface what is really driving these inflows or outflows. Because a lot of people had expected that with the launch of the Bitcoin spot ETFs, with over 10 ETFs getting approved, this would broaden access for institutional capital to come into the space. And these were not just Bitcoin futures contract ETFs like we'd seen in the past, like the BitTo ETF or ETN products like GBTC or Grayscale's Bitcoin Trust, right? This was going to be an ETF that anyone could get access to. And this was the big story that everyone was going after, that there's just tons of institutional capital that's waiting at the floodgates with BlackRock and Fidelity and all these big money managers coming on board and those who create financial products. The institutional investors were just waiting at the floodgates to buy Bitcoin. However, for the first time since back in September of 2023, when Bitcoin's price was around $27,000, we have seen a red flip on the Lux Algo Signals and Overlay Indicator, one of our leading momentum indicators we use here on this channel. And beyond that as well, we can also see that the 21-day moving average, which served as a bastion of support throughout the trend throughout the close of 2023, is now not only trending down with price, but is also serving as resistance. This is the telltale sign that something is going wrong and that there is much more sell side pressure when it comes to market order flow than buy side pressure. So why is this the case? Well, it has to do with a lackluster amount of demand versus what the market expected. There's an individual on Twitter, CC15 Capital, who has done God's work here. And on a day-by-day -day basis, you guys can not only go follow him on Twitter, but he does a great job of tracking all the public and readily available data on all of the major 10 spot Bitcoin ETFs, as well as GBTC, the exchange traded note that's been around for a long period of time, on the actual spot Bitcoin holdings or assets under management for each ETF. This lets us know how much demand is actually coming from these ETFs, and generally speaking, how much Bitcoin is being stored in these exchange traded products. Now, as I mentioned, all this data is readily available, but it can be difficult to track all of it. Luckily, he's got a great chart here of the day by day holdings increase or decrease over time on all of these different ETP products. Now, if you look at the headlines, if you follow what a lot of people out there who, again, I know a lot of people like Sam Perm Bear at the end of the day, I've been bullish the greater part of crypto's history. I've been calling for an ETF for a long time. In 2023, we got some things wrong and maybe we were leaning a bit too bearish considering the macro environment. But there are a lot of people who are being perma bulls here and are completely ignoring the data set here on what really matters, the results of the ETF. Because if you look at the headlines, the number you're going to see from everyone is the near $4 billion that have come into these new ETF products. Out of the 10 new applications that finally got approval from the SEC, all the way from BlackRock's iShare Bitcoin ETF to Fidelity's to Bitwise, you name it. There has been about a $4 billion net inflow. And in just a matter of seven trading days, this figure would sound quite exciting if you're just reading the headlines. But if you don't understand the nuance of it, you're going to get caught up in the trap. The trap of not realizing just how weak the ETF results actually are. Because this is not new capital entirely. This is not new money flowing in $4 billion of institutional money and a part of the tsunami that so many people are expecting to come. 
problem. What it is, in fact, 70% of this $4 billion is Bitcoin leaving the GBTC product, which already had around 620,000 Bitcoins stored in it. What we are seeing here is people taking advantage. Many people likely have their um, GBTC shares in their 401k, Roth IRA, IRA account, whatever it might be, or even in their standard normal brokerage account taking the time to sell their position and rotate into a whole range of the other ETF products which have a much lower maintenance fee. Rather than 1.5% annually, you can drop that rate as low as 0.25 or even 0.19% on some of these ETF products. So a lot of people have been basically cycling already held Bitcoin, spot Bitcoin ETN shares from the Grayscale GBTC product into the new Bitcoin ETF products. So let's look at the hard numbers here, right? As I mentioned earlier, we can see how there's been a net outflow. The data point that some of you are missing is 66,420 Bitcoin being removed from GBTC. So if we basically account for that number there, we see that there's really only an inflow of 28,000 new Bitcoin. If you do the math on that, and you can basically calculate the total new report inflows and stuff into the new ETF products, what you're basically getting is you go from around $4 billion to $1.2 billion. Now, I know that still sounds like a big amount of inflows. It sounds like a big number, right? And many people might rightfully say, Nick, this is the first you know, seven days of trading. We've got another probably 50 weeks here. You know, This is because the markets are closed on Saturday and Sunday. We've probably got around another 50 weeks worth of trading where this ETF could continue to grow and swallow up liquidity and swallow up the available supply of Bitcoin. But guys, the important detail here is this is launch week. This was the week where we were supposed to see the floodgates of liquidity opening into the ETF. And I'm not saying here, if I saw without the outflows of GBTC, if I saw $4 billion, I would be thinking twice here about a Bitcoin correction. If it was really $4 billion in new inflows, I would be saying, guys, you got to have at least a little bit of allocation to Bitcoin. But $1.2 billion? After so many years of anticipation, so much supposed liquidity sitting on the sidelines, it is a very disappointing launch guys and you can see that here clearly that there are some days where we're not even seeing growth we see a net negative outflow so if the trend is already starting to stall here if we do not see a continued trend upwards over the next week if we see we don't see some kind of change here and things start to continue stalling here bitcoin's price should rightfully correct here it should absolutely continue going lower I wouldn't be surprised if we continue to see all coins correct from this point. You can see that the 21 day is clearly serving as resistance. The Lux algo indicator flipped towards resistance and you can see that the trend signal here faced as resistance, driving price lower. And now we're looking very much like we're gonna come down at a minimum into these longer term moving averages, the 100 day pocket, the 200 day pocket, and even the 200 week. This would be at a minimum what we should expect here. And we've been saying that here for the last couple of weeks because we are not seeing that massive inflow that so many people were expecting here on these ETF products. We're seeing a lot of recycling from the existing GBTC product. And while that might be good news for BlackRock, stealing that market share and Fidelity and all these other ETP creators, it doesn't mean that it adds any real benefit for Bitcoin's price. This is a big wake up call guys. And it's a big reason why I think a lot of the plays we've been tracking here, a lot of the Bitcoin related narrative plays are starting to take a nosedive here. We can see that Ordinals is down another 7% here. Stacks is down another 4%, setting in its lowest price point here since back in late December and looking very much like it's not going to hold here on the potential support band for Lux Algo going down into these moving averages. And we can see outside of just the Bitcoin related plays, it's having a negative weight on the broader altcoin market. Take in all of the different alternative L1 or L2 plays you can think of. Solana, barely holding here in the Luxago support band, 21 days serving as resistance. Avalanche here, red trend flip here on the Luxago, 21 day, we're not even retesting it anymore. It was not only resistance for multiple weeks, but now we are flooding down fast towards the 100 day or the 200 day pocket, which is still a solid 33% correction if we go as low as that range. 
Cardano couldn't even get above the 200 week moving average like many other plays. One of the more lackluster L1s in the space. And we can see that the trend is flipped red, the 21 day served as resistance, and we are now down here coming into the moving averages for likely a much better entry. Matic, again, while we're holding here in the Luxago support band here, we've corrected already 25 cents here, 25% from the relative highs. And it's a question of whether or not we're going to be able to hold here. The 100 day and the 200 week are now starting to, in the near term, act as resistance. This is not a good sign to see, guys. And for those new spicy L1 plays that have got everyone excited, like Sui and Sei, well, both of them have hold, had steady corrections here, nearly 30 to 33% corrections over the past couple of days. And they're not holding on their 21 days. They're snapping through it. And it looks like they're going to be breaking through the support band here that's been holding them up over the past couple months waiting for corrections likely around 50 to 66 percent from the relative highs into the 100 day pocket this is not a good sign to see we take a look at bonk as well meme coin a lot of people fomoed in here we asked to see whether or not we're going to be able to hold above that 21 day or get above the resistance band and we didn't see either of those and this has continued to pull back since into the moving averages that we've talked about for the past couple of weeks and that's not to mention for those who tried to front run, who said, look, beyond the altcoin market, Nick, I'm into Bitcoin, I'm just DCing into Bitcoin, or I'm buying Bitcoin related plays. For all those who bought MicroStrategy stock as a front run to the ETF or bought into Bitcoin miner stocks, you're down substantially, right? MicroStrategy is where it is at back in early November. Yikes. More than two and a half months of price appreciation gone. And we see this for all of the major Bitcoin miners out there. You can take a look at Marathon. Steady correction from $31 down to around 16 per share. Riot here, again, continuing to collapse from $18 down to 10. It's not looking very good if you've just been hodling after this ETF news. This is a prime example, guys, of why we've been talking for months about not only to be worried about a buy the hype, sell the news type of event with the ETF, but beyond that as well, we've got to ask a much bigger question here. Now that the ETF is launched, as we have discussed for a long period of time in this channel, is there really the institutional capital that people have claimed there is? No, I'm not just saying some guy's opinion on Twitter or some inside anonymous source that he knows from working with him and he works at BlackRock and it's going to be a big deal and yada yada. I don't care about what people think or perceive or are predicting is going to happen. What I care about is the hard numbers. We have it live now. It's out there in the market. And there are not any other narratives I can think of that are going to drum up Bitcoin's price. Like, what more can you do from this point on? Take gold, for example, as a market. When the gold ETF launched, yeah, it was a big deal and it drove up gold's price for many years to come. However, outside of the ETF, what new things could you introduce to increase the potential buy side demand for gold's price? There's nothing. And it's the same case here for Bitcoin. Bitcoin is not a programmable network. It is at its core a store of value. And if there is not the institutional flow of capital to buy up that Bitcoin, then there continues to be the market sell side pressure we're seeing right now where people are selling off of that news. Prices are going to move lower. That, that's not a really bearish take, guys. I, I really want to drill that in. I know most of you who, who watch the videos into this and actually understand the context and don't just read the title and the thumbnail. You get where I'm coming from, I think. But for those who are still on the fence, all I'm saying here is that it's not as simple as DCA and the number's always going to go up and to the right. We are still likely heading into a recessionary environment in the next 6 to 12 months. And you have to consider when you're building your investment thesis into Bitcoin and you're doing potentially some automatic dollar cost average program or trying to trade Bitcoin towards higher prices, it doesn't really matter. You have to come back to that fundamental question. Is there going to be more market order buy side pressure than sell side pressure? There's always going to be a buyer and sell on this side of the trade. What drives price in either direction is that market order flow. Who is outpacing who? And if that market buy side or sell side pressure is strong enough to clear through the bid or asks at current price ranges, then prices are going to move in the direction where that market order flow is leading. I'm only here, guys, 
to be as honest and genuine as I can with you all. I'm not trying to get you guys to sell your bags. And I'm not even saying that Bitcoin has to go to new lows, but I am saying here that a substantial correction could be in play here for the next few months, even with the coming halving event, because the ETF inflows aren't what people expected. And I think this is relatively bad news in the sense that the halving event that's gonna be coming up here in the next couple of months is gonna be a drop of the inflation rate going from 1.4 to 0.7% not 25% down to 12.5% or 50% to 25%. Those are all equitably halvings, but the net effect against the existing supply and that market order buyer sell side demand equation is getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And I know some people will just say, oh, it's just the narrative. People are just gonna buy into it. Guys, it's not that easy. It's really not that easy. It has to do with the demand equation versus supply. It has to do with whether or not we've got too much supply on the books in order for demand to actually provide that support for Bitcoin going forward. And if we don't, then this weekly candle that we saw, which already, I mean, let's just be honest with ourselves here, guys. This monthly or weekly candle doesn't look very good. Shot down at a prior range here in the past, back in March. Just an ugly tail here. Ugly wicks on the candle. You guys can still hold your crypto positions. I'm not here to give you guys direct financial advice. I'm not here to tell you what you should or shouldn't do. I'm here to tell you guys that I'm definitely remaining more cautious. I'm waiting for better entries. And it's not that you can't dollar cost average, but do so in a way where you dollar cost uh, average more aggressively on further discounts. And set decent standards for yourself, guys. I mean, again, this thing isn't just guaranteed to always go up. Hold around, make sure you wait to get better entries here on similar support ranges like the weekly Lux Alga. This was exactly where we found surprise support here back in September before the continued rally. And right now that's sitting around $33,000. That's not a negligible difference. The moving averages, long-term weekly moving averages, you know, down here the 200 day are flatlining and they're sitting around 34K. At a minimum, you have to make sure that if you're gonna be making sizable entries into this market on hopes that prices are gonna move higher, that you at least have a favorable risk to reward profile, that you have something in mind where you're making sure that you're gonna mitigate you know, any potential significant downside. Beyond that as well, guys, I would say that while it may not be the scenario that's popular now, it may not be the opinion that many people hold right now, and I might be a bit of a contrarian by saying this, I would say to be careful because now that the biggest narrative has gone through, it's played its course, it was a big reason why we rallied from the bear market lows here in November 2022 here to where we are in January of 2024. What is the new narrative going to be? Bitcoin can go up. It doesn't always need a new narrative, but man, we had to come up with a lot of faulty narratives going into the ETF narrative here in October to get this to move up to where it was. The Bitcoin bank run, bricks for challenging the dollar, none, none of that materialized. So what's, what's gonna be next? Like, Because again, you can always stretch the truth for so long. And I think that there are going to be a lot of people who, who are saying hodl, hodl, you know, don't, don't, don't ever test Bitcoin. Bitcoin doesn't care. It always goes up. Who are going to start to think twice as they bought up in this range. And it can very well drive prices down at a minimum to healthier correction territory or may very well be the end of the trend. It might leave Bitcoin going sideways or down for the rest of this year. We'll have to see. I'm not saying that has to happen here. We're going to continue to watch prices. I'm getting to the point here over the last couple of years where I don't want to sit here and try to make some bold out of the window prediction. But I think we need to watch these moving averages and see how price reacts at this corrective territory. And if it doesn't look good, then we got to be much more cautious going forward. Anyways, I rambled out a good amount here today, guys. 
I hope this video, if anything, proved valuable for you guys. And if you guys want to get access to tools like LuxAlgo, you guys can check out the link down below in the description. LuxAlgo is one of our partner tools here in this channel. It's one of the few that I like to use. And you it comes with a whole range of different indicators, but I recommend using the signals and overlay indicator. It's one of my favorites personally, one of the core indicators that they offer. And I recommend on crypto markets to use it on the daily and weekly time frame for equity markets. You can start to use the weekly or monthly for more longer term swing opportunities. But anyways, that's it for today's video, guys. As I mentioned, I ramble on a good amount. If you did enjoy this video, again, consider dropping a like. It's always appreciated. And I hope, if anything, it proves as food for thought because I'm not here to just tell you guys what you want to hear. I'm not here to just preach what I want to see in markets. I would love if the Bitcoin ETF is a huge success and Bitcoin goes off to the moon because that's going to provide a ton of opportunities, not only to just go along Bitcoin, but outside of this, well, in the altcoin market and Bitcoin-related infrastructure. And maybe that can still play out. But at a minimum, we need to see this test at more important price levels. We need to see those inflows. Once there's a discount on Bitcoin's price, we need to see those ETFs ramping up their spot Bitcoin holdings to show that this is the new demand vehicle for Bitcoin's price. Because if it doesn't, I got to be honest with you guys, I don't know what is going to be. So anyways, you guys have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you guys at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wednesday. Have a great day, everyone. Talk soon.